the house that you're in, or the land that you own, let's go back to a couple of generations. My grandfather was a sharecropper until 1950. And that's when they bought the farm here. And he and his children moved out here, he and three children. And uh, he raised us here. And we were taught that at the end of the day, the family was most important. And so as we had ups and downs like every family, we tried to keep all of our family business contained to, this, to the house. Uh, if anything went wrong, the family unit came together to take care of it. Uh, if anybody got in, in a situation. So, and when you get old, most people who were raised in that environment, you go through life, you have a lot of friends, you go a lot of places, you do a lot of things, but it's the family that comes back and takes care of you or that you take care of. So, never forget where you come from and who your family is. When I grew up, in the 50s and 60s, it was a dual community. It was a black community and white community. You know, we went to all black churches. We went to all black schools. We didn't go to places white people went. You didn't go to the restaurants. Everything was black. So there was nothing wrong with it because that was our comfort zone. Uh, that was the way it was. We never necessarily wanted to be, well, we didn't want to be where the white people were. That was not one of our goals. And so the black community didn't go for integration to be around white people. You went for integration so we could have a chance of equal education and opportunities. I like people, but I beat to my own drum. Things just come out of my mouth that that are inappropriate, but they're not harmful or hurtful. So much for being a drum major. Kind of don't know who I am now. <laughs> I am like confused as to who I am. I'll do little annoying things like, uh, I'll say, if we're going through a door, I'll tell you an example where I did this, I did it in a hospital lobby. It was me and another guy standing there, and the elevator door opened. And I took one step, and I backed up, and I said, white man first. So the man went up and got in the elevator. And so we both get in the elevator. He says, I don't believe I did that. I really don't believe I did that. He says, I'll never do no mess like that again. So we chat all the way up. Elevator door open on the fifth floor. I take a step to get off. And then he did too, and I backed up, and I says, you know the rules. <laughs> And this is me being young, thinking I was cool, hanging out with people from the hospital. They let me run with them, or maybe they ran with me. <laughs> and that's it. You know more about me now than I know about myself. I don't think of myself as a local celebrity. People, and I don't know that I'm a local celebrity. I know, I know a lot of people. At my age, you're not popular. You're well known. The way I would tell everybody to live their life is, first you have to look at yourself, and if you're happy with who you are, then everything else works. You're happy, then you maintain a happy attitude. When you see other people, you see happiness likeness and you your karma draws those people to you so everything around you is positive and once positive things are generated in your life then that's how you live <laughs>